Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. The content library in Anime Studio is incredibly useful because it allows us to pull in preset objects, characters, and scenery into the project files we are working on, at the same time allowing us to save different assets to the library so that they can be used later on. So first, let's take a look at how we can pull different assets in from the library that are already built into the software. So, in order to access the library, you'll first need to go up to Window, and then Library. Here, you'll see a new panel will appear, and basically you have all sorts of different categories in this first tab. You have characters, you have props, pictures, audio, particle effects, scenery, 3D objects, and so on. So you have a lot to choose from right off the bat. You will also notice that each of these has two different folders. There's the My folder, and then there is just the regular folder. The regular folder is what houses all of the built-in assets for Anime Studio. So if you hit the drop-down arrow on any of these, you have access to all sorts of different categories. We could then, for instance, access Anime Studio 10 because we have some awesome new characters for Anime Studio 10. If you haven't seen any of those on the startup files, I definitely recommend you check them out. They're terrifically animated and just full of character and life. But if you want to use one of these then in your own project, you could then click on one and then you could hit the double check mark icon. This will then add it to the scene. Now, your characters that you add to the library can retain animation. So you can see right here, if we play this out, there's actually already animation built into this character. And again, it looks really cool. So you can go through any of these categories and you could just pick out different characters and props to add to your own creations. So again, we could go to props, go to props, go to assorted, find a beam, Add it in. And there you go. It's as simple as that. You look on your layers panel, you can see that we have the monster bone layer, we have the beam, and you can manipulate these just like you could your own drawings. And if you're looking for something specific, you can always go up to the search tab. You could then type in, for instance, monster, hit search, and you can see the monster then appears right there. You could fine tune your search then. Instead of all categories, you could just do characters or props and so on. Obviously, if we just did props, we're probably not going to find anything because the monster lives in the uh, characters folder, so he won't be in the props. But you can do that, and you can also search favorites. So in your library, let's say, going back here to that monster, you really like this and you want to use it more often, well, highlight it, and then hit the favorite icon. You can choose the folder, click OK, and you can add subfolders to your favorites if you wish. Let's say you want to add favorite characters and so forth. If you go back here, you can see you can add a new folder for that. If you go to your favorites now, though, you can see the monster is in there. If we had subfolders, you can then browse those subfolders and look at your favorites through there. So it's easy as well to maintain your most used assets or your favorite assets. So what about adding an asset to the library itself? Well, that's just as easy. So let's come over here to another project file. We have a character already drawn up here. And we can go to the library here. And what we can do now is just click on the My Characters folder because this is a character. And you could, for instance, put this in your props if you wanted to. But why do that? You have this nice layout for your content library with these tabs and these categories. So you might as well take advantage of that and put your characters in the characters category. So click on the My Characters folder and make sure that your layer for your character is selected. And then come down here and then you can save to library by hitting the plus button. It will then save to the library. If you hit the drop down menu, you can now see we have this character right here. 
And then if we wanted to, we could go to File, New, and then with this character still selected, hit the double check mark, and there he is. He's now in the library, good to go. And he even retains his animation, actually, if you want that to be a thing, because I believe we had his mouth moving. And you can see his mouth moves just like it did in the original file. So let's say, for instance, you have a character who's walking and you want to save that character as well as the walking animation. Well, you could save him right in your library and maybe even name it character walking as an example. And you could save all sorts of different instances of that character if you wanted to. So that's just something you can do if you'd like. Finally, if you want to remove from the library, you can always hit the subtract button right here. This will remove the selected item from the library. You can also create folders in the library right here as well by using that create folder button. So now when you're saving these assets, where are they going on your computer? Well, that's pretty easy actually. When you first launch Anime Studio, you may recall it asks you to create a content folder. And once you create that content folder, you can browse to it. You can see right here, I'm just in my content folder right here. It makes an Anime Studio Pro folder. And then we have the library. And then we have characters. And you can see right here, we have the Hitman character. We have a thumbnail for him, as well as the actual Anime Studio file of him. So if you ever want to go in and edit that character from the library, you could go to your file browser, look for it, and open that file right then and there. And then you could edit it right there, save it, and of course it'll save in the library as well. So that's just a quick overview of the library. It works really well if you're working with complicated projects and you have a lot of assets that you want to share between files. If you'd like more information on Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.